Right. Well, welcome to Toddlers for Titans. My name is Chantel. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about me just so you know where we're getting some of this stuff. I actually have my teaching credential from Northwest University um, for elementary education. Although I have worked with kids from infant to college, so I have the whole spectrum. Um, the last 20 years, I've been either a volunteer, I've been an interim children's pastor, or I've been a lead pastor, children's pastor. And um, now I'm just home with, I have three beautiful little boys, so now I'm just home. And they're all really close in age, which I'll show you in a minute. So um, this is Tyler for Titans, and um, I'm really excited to be here. Now, when I was first thinking about this, this workshop, the title in my head came just being silly, because I, I think I'm funny, but most people don't, but that's okay. Um, I was thinking, ah, little people, like, right? Like, that's what the reaction you tend to get. Like, you're like, hey, will you be a part of my ministry? I'd love to have you on our team. And they're like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Where do you need help? And you're like, oh, you know, I would love to put you in one of the early childhood classrooms. And they go, <laughs> right? Or you're one of the early childhood workers, and someone's like, hey, where do you serve in your early childhood? And then you're like, oh, I'm glad you did that. I, I could never do little people, right? Or you have the opposite. You have, would you be a part of our early childhood? And they're like, oh, I love the little ones. Right? They're clapping their hands in front of you. I'm just being silly. But in general, how many of you have experienced something like that to a degree, right? Well, hopefully this workshop, if you are feeling that way or if you know people, will help you communicate with people what a joy and an honor it is to work with these little people, to help mold them into titans, mold them into great leaders. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. But before that, I want to show you my family. This is my husband, Brad, my three boys. This is why they asked me to do this class, three children. <laughs> In May, when my third was born, I had three children under the age of three. Crazy. Not planned quite that way. It just happened. So I have my oldest son, David, and then my middle one, Noah, and then Micah, who you guys have probably all seen me with um, this weekend. So that's my family. And so honestly... Early childhood is very dear to my heart because it hits really close to home since I have three boys. So they keep me busy. Never boring. Never. So what is a titan? What is a titan? Okay. So a titan is someone who is godlike or powerful or and influential in a certain field. Okay. What do we want our little ones? What is, what is a certain field we want them to be influential in and powerful in? Sharing the gospel being Christ-like, right? We want to raise these kids to be Christ-like, and there's nothing more important to me than raising our kids to follow Christ and to make an impact on the people around them, okay? So hopefully this workshop, we're going to do a couple, I'm going to talk about developmental stages a little bit and learning styles and why that's important to help raise Titans, and we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to do a little bit of role play, and I'm going to do the Noah's Ark story three different ways with you guys, okay? So we're going to get up out of our chairs and move around. So the more you're involved and like talk with me and stuff like that, the better it will be. Okay, so don't be like, mm, don't be too shy because we're going to have fun. So, so what do we know about early childhood? In order to, to learn how to teach them, we need to know stuff about them. So what, what's something you know about early childhood kids? No attention span. Very short attention span. Very active. Yes, very curious. I'm sorry, what? They like to play. They love to play, yeah. They like to play. They test your limits. They do test your limits, right? They are loud. They are loud. They're learning a lot. They're learning a lot. Yes. They're, they are like sponges, right? Anything else? Very blunt. Very blunt. Yes, they don't really have a filter. They just say it as it is, right? Which I actually love about them. Sometimes it's a little embarrassing, but it's fun. So those are all things that we know about them. So there are, there's something called developmental stages. Does anybody know what developmental stages means? When someone says that? Age that they're at. That's the, the developmental age. The developmental age. Any other? Yes, different milestones, different things that they're able to do at different ages. So we're briefly going to look at these, but I'm going to model it more in when we do the different stories, and you'll see more of that. Okay, so up to one year, so that's, that's your babies. They're the ones that babble, they kind of talk with you, and they, you know, those babies, you have to have them close up to your face, right? 
to have them interact with you. They start to crawl, they start to walk, wobble, wobble, right? So you probably aren't going to have a one-year-old or someone younger than that using scissors, <laughs> right? They're not capable of doing that, okay? They don't understand big things, but they're starting to be interested, so they their eye contact and pointing. That's a lot of <clears throat> under ones is when they're really trying to talk. It's that they look at you and you're like, ah, but that, 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 and you're like, ah, sure, yeah, right? And they're pointing at things. They don't really play with each other. They like to play kind of next to each other, but they're not really playing with each other yet, right? So doing games where they're like partnering up with people, probably not a good idea in a one-year-old classroom, right? But a lot of like, they like to follow and copy. So doing things like that where they can follow and copy, okay? Then you got your twos. They, they start to say more words. They can start to form sentences. They begin to play like make-believe, just little things, little things, not full on, but what they've seen their parents do at home, they might start to try to do a little bit. Like when you get the vacuum out, they're the ones that are like trying to pretend to vacuum, little things like that, okay? Follow simple instructions. So not like, hey, I need you to go pick up that toy and walk over to over that box and put it in that box and then go pick up that toy. You know what I mean? Simple ones. Go grab the toy. They grab the toy. Okay, let's take it to the box. Very simple steps they can follow. Okay? Threes, you can do more instructions. You can do that. I need you to pick up that toy and go put it over there and find your seat. Three is more capable of understanding those kind of things. Definitely can understand what they're saying. They talk in bigger, longer sentences. They can start to build things better, shorter, you know, like a little tower, things like that. They might be able to stand on one foot for a couple seconds, right? They're definitely jumping at that point, whereas in ones you just see the kids like trying <laughs> to jump, but just like lifting their foot up, right? It's a little different. Fours is really when you get into the more pretend play, the more pretend play where they can actually be a part of the story better. Obviously, they, have, they understand grammar a little better. They don't understand what grammar is, but they can talk the right way. Um, basic rules, you know, hopping, more of the hopping and standing on a foot longer. So you can do different activities and different games with them, like hide and seek or let's hop to from here to here and have a little race, those kind of things. You can do more with a four-year-old and five-year-old. Five-year-olds, this is where it gets to the point where they start to want to please and they want people to like them. And instead of playing by themselves, they want to be a part. They want to find friends. They want to follow their friends. They like to copy everything. They like to act out. They like to sing and dance, okay? They can stand longer, hop and swing and run. They can do all of that, okay? So those things are important. Why do you think those things are important to know? Because you you know, what, depending on the, the, the age class that you're teaching, you, know, you want to have activities that relate to the, the, the mental stage. Yeah, you want, to have, you want to have activities that will reach their age group, help them engage and do different things. You don't want to have something that's too hard for someone to not complete. So sometimes I laugh because the curriculum gives you this craft. <laughs> and you have to cut something out. And it's for a three-year-old class. And you're like, do you know how long it would take a three-year-old to cut this out? And they can't even cut. And it's round and circular. And you're like, how is a three-year-old going to cut okay, this is the teacher, let me do your craft for you, and you can color with a crayon, right? So understanding these differences and these developmental stages is going to help you plan better for the activities that you're going to do. These are some helpful sites. Um, <clears throat> at the end, if you want, I actually have a sheet. I tried to print it off and it was not working for me, and then I had to leave to come here. But I have a sheet that actually has these listed on it and a couple other sites that I can mail, email to you if you want. But one of the ones that I found the most hope, uh, helpful is the top one, the www.cdc.government. Uh, uh, if you put milestones in, you can actually find on there sheets that look like this, and it talks about the social-emotional differences and what to look for in that age, uh, language and communication, so how they're able to, to talk and communicate with you, cognitive, how they learn and think and process and problem solve, movement. Um, you can find these on there. If you go to milestones and then you click on the age, it's on the right-hand side. There's a download that you can download. And it has this um, for like 
infant all the way up to teens. So it's a great site for something like that if that's what you want to look at to just kind of get a better idea for what, <coughs> excuse me, what your age range is. I'm totally hitting this mic, my bad. So, <coughs> but knowing that, that will help us plan of activities better. Another thing that you need to be aware of when you're teaching is learning styles. Okay, there's, they have lots of different studies on this and they have more than three learning styles, but these are the three basic ones, is visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Now your auditory learner, they have to hear to learn. Okay, that is the biggest learning style and the most easy to do because you have to talk. That's auditory, right? That they're also the kids that like music a lot and noise. They have to hear to learn. If they don't hear something, their, their brain isn't actually engaging as quickly, so they miss out on learning things. And then you have your visual learners. So they have to see to learn. So in this picture, you can kind of see he's holding his ears because he's hearing someone say, pie. That's an auditory learner. Someone that hears that is going to be like, oh, I want pie, right? The visual learner sees in pictures. Sometimes they see in words, but they really see in pictures. So if they can't imagine it in their head, they won't understand it, okay? So if you're telling a story to your kids and you have no visual, and you're talking about, for instance, Noah and the flood, and it flooded and the water covered the hills and the mountains, they can picture that in their head, right? If they know what a mountain looks like, they can picture it in their head, but if they don't know what a mountain looks like and you're saying, yeah, the water went above the mountain, they're like, Water? Okay, I know what water is, but what's a mountain? They, they can't imagine it. So you, um, so they see in pictures. So, and then kinesthetic, which is like, I'm like pretty much all kinesthetic, hands-on, which is why I do this a lot, um, is they, it's feel, movement. They have to be able to taste it. They have to feel it. They have to use their senses. So hearing, seeing, touching, they need that physical activity to learn. So a lot of times we go, sit still, sit still, sit still. And when you tell a kinesthetic learner to sit still, they stop learning because they stop engaging. And I'm like proof of this. I have always had a hard time in church because you're supposed to sit in the chair and listen to the pastor. And if there's nothing that I feel like I can connect to that I've experienced or that I can see or touch, I get a little distracted and I'm just like, oh, 15 minutes have passed. I have no idea what he just said, right? So when we force children to stop moving, we're actually forcing them to turn off their brain because that's how they learn, if they're a kinesthetic learner. And when you do early childhood, you have to have visual and you have to have kinesthetic, something they can see and feel because developmentally their brains cannot understand if they can't see or feel it. Does that make sense? So how do we apply what we know to form toddlers for titans? And this is where we're going to get into. We're going to do a little bit of role play um, and things like that to kind of help you understand how we apply. Why is, why is learning styles important? Why is developmental stages important when we do activities? So what I'm going to have you do as fast as we can is um, we're going to push the chairs. I'm going to have you move the baby out way, but we're going to push the chairs all the way back. Um, unless you need a chair, I totally understand that. Um, but one thing with early childhood, if you can get down to their level on the ground, it's the best place to be. So if you are capable and you're willing to sit on the ground with me, um, push your chairs back. And if not, and you need a chair, you can bring it. We're going to rotate a couple different spots. We'll start here, but um, we're going to rotate different, a couple different spots and you can bring a chair with you. So if we can just... I ran out, but if I get your email at the end... Oh, oh awesome. Thank you. So if we can just really fast just... Yep. Push the chairs back. <clears throat> Thank you guys. Thank you for being flexible and uh, going on this adventure with me. All right. And then if you can come back up front and just sit on the floor or bring a chair next to you, that's totally fine. We're going to be right over here. Well, I'm going to be um, doing story three different ways. 
And the first one is read-alongs. How many of you have ever done story with books? Pictures, okay. It can be a little tricky because you have to read it, but also keep your eyes on the kids, right? You don't want your nose in the book like this. Because what does that do to the kids? They can't see it, for one. And they don't have eye contact with you, which is really important when you're teaching. Sometimes we can get comfortable holding our lesson plan in our hands and we're talking a lesson plan and we're not realizing that the kids are like looking around and not, not engaging in what you're doing because you've lost that, that communication, that eye contact. So, so um, you can do um, reading time, but you also want to involve, not just read the words, but involve the kids. So you can do it a couple different ways. But I'm going to not actually read these words. We're just going to tell, basically tell the story. Okay? So, Noah's Ark. Can you all see the boat? Can you point? Point to the boat. Okay, remember, your, your kids, when they're younger, twos, threes, they do a lot of communication through pointing. Right? That, and that is a kinesthetic way to involve them. It's a movement. Okay? Point to the boat. All right. This man, his name's Noah. Can you say Noah? Noah. Noah, Noah was an old, old man. Can you make a long beard with your hand? See how we're involving movement and, in, and including the kids? One day, God told him something. God told him, I'm going to send a flood. <gasps> you know what a flood is? A flood is a, when the water covers everything. That's all you can see. Flood. Yeah. Okay. He told him he was going to send a flood, but he wanted to protect Noah and the animals, so he asked Noah to make something. Does anybody by this first picture, can you tell me what he maybe will make? What do you think he'll make? <laughs> Boats. Okay. Now, when you are in early childhood, they will shout out. It's up to you how you want to do that. You can lose control that way. So I would suggest having them raise their hand. And if they're talking, go, oh, I'm sorry, put a bubble in your mouth. Raise your hand. Okay? Bubble in your mouth. Don't let your bubble escape. It's a great technique for classroom management so that they don't talk. Okay? Oh, hold that bubble in. Raise your hand. And call on someone that way. Okay? It's a great way to do that. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I want to get to other things, but I want to give you an idea of what's going on, okay? Oh, look at you were right. God asked Noah to build a boat. Oh, how many of you have ever hammered something? Anybody raise your hand hammer something? Can you pretend like you have a hammer in your hand? And this is the wood, and we are going to hammer a nail into the wood. Oh, good job. Okay, again, movement, involvement in the story, okay? And you want them to point things out. So, oh, the boat was finished. And God asked Noah to get two of every animal. I know the Bible talks about having more than that. But for little kids, two is good. Two of every animal. Oh, what animals do you see? Who can raise their hand? Who can raise their hand? And tell me, what animals do you see? What animals? Right, what do you Giraffes. see? Giraffes. <gasps> what else do you see? I see an elephant. An elf, oh my gosh, what's an elephant say? Go, <laughs> right? You're involving them, you're getting them to say noises. Early childhood, they love animals, and they're learning about animals and noises, so involving them in that way, okay? So you go through the story that way, and oh my gosh, look at how they have all the animals. Oh, I see lions. <gasps> what's a lion say? Roar, right? So that's how you do a, a story time with a book in an early childhood kind of classroom, okay? Um, and it shows you have the visual, you have the movements, you have them pointing things out, making noises for auditory learners, right? Mm -hmm. Doing all these things. Because auditory learners are also going to be your ones that like to make noise or ask lots of questions, right? So if you have that kid that's like, oh, 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 that's typically an auditory learner, okay? So involving them as much as you can in this story <clears throat> and showing them the pictures is really important, okay? So another thing that is really important is transitions. So we're going to transition to something else. Um, but how you transition, you don't say, okay, guys, let's go to the tables. Because what's going to happen if you do that? They're going to be And then they're going to be like, oh, there's a two-way over there. Because remember, early childhood, especially preschool, older kids, 
and toddlers, if they see anything that will distract them, they're going to go to it, right? So making sure, oh, guys, with your bubbles in your mouth, what we're going to do is we're going to do an activity at the table over there. So what I need you to do is stand up. Stand up. Bubbles in your mouth. Seatbelts on. That's a way to keep their hands to themselves because how many of you know that little ones like to touch each other? Right? Bubbles in. Seatbelts on. And we're going to tiptoe. See who can tiptoe. This is tiptoe. We're going to tiptoe and find a seat over at the table. Let's go. Tiptoe. Tiptoe. <gasps> Keep the bubbles in the mouth. Right? Because they're still going to talk. Don't lose your bubbles. Find a seat and sit. So that would be an easy transition. Again, depending on your age, one step at a time, how I had you stand first, put your bubble in your mouth, and you would take it step by step. Other kids, when they're four, five years old, six years old, you can say, this is what I want you to do. Bubble in your mouth, seatbelts on, can you tiptoe over to this spot? Ready, go. Snap your fingers, and they'll go, okay? Toddlers, it's like follow order, right? Toddlers, come on guys. And you're like pushing them along, right? Because they don't, they don't understand all that. The toddlers too, a great time to do story time is snack time. Because they're already entertained. They're eating. You have them around the table. You can do story time with them that way. Okay. So, this is a great way to also do a story with toddlers. I have a little Noah's Ark and little people. I don't have enough to go around, but obviously some of you, you hopefully don't have your toddler rooms this full, with, unless you have lots of help, because mm -hmm. it's hard to have that many kids with two liters. But you can pass these out. I don't have enough for everyone. But you can pass them out. Anybody want one? Anybody want to be a part? Take. You got Noah. You're lucky. You get to be the... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. All right. So this is even great with snack. You give the little animals out to the toddlers, and you go, oh, what do you have? You have a zebra. I have no idea what a zebra does. <laughs> so that's one that you typically can pass if you want. Oh, look at she has a lion. Give the kids a couple seconds to play with them, okay? That's fine. Let them play with them, especially in toddlers. They want to touch. They want to feel. And while they're playing with them, you can be walking around, walking around or talking to them like, oh, what's the lion say? Do you know what a lion says? Right? And they all love, oh, the lion roar. <laughs> yeah. And you can go around to the different animals and talk about what they are. Oh, how cool are those animals? And keep talking. And toddlers, okay, you really don't want story to go over five minutes. Like really you don't want story to go over three minutes because that's even too long with toddlers, okay? Let them fill the animals and talk about, oh, look at this boat. Oh, what a cool boat. Do you know that Noah made a boat? Can you hammer? Go hammer, hammer, <clears throat> right? Noah made a boat and you know what Noah did with the boat? Is he put animals in. Oh, do you want to put your animal in? Put your animal in. And you walk around, and you let them put their animals in, right? However they want, doesn't matter. They're toddlers. They just want to get it in the hole, and that's Mom. actually, <laughs> they would. <laughs> they, they do sometimes, right? Um, yeah, or throw it at you. That's, yep, just being careful to communicate with them. And that's where you can say, oh, gently put them in, gently put them in, right? So... <clears throat> You got your boat here. That one. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, we're flying. We're going, we're going. <laughs> right? So you get the animals in, and then and then you talk about how God sent the rain. Oh, do you guys know the rain? It gets you all wet. This would be a great time to also have like a spray bottle, right? So they understand what rain is. Spray, spray, spray. It's also kinesthetic. It's touching them. They're feeling it. Right? And the water came, and the boat moved back and forth. Can you sway back and forth? Again, there's the movement, okay? A great way to do a Bible story with a toddler, okay? And God made promises. Promises is a big thing. Hard for a toddler to understand, okay? You basically want to get the point across. This, the animals were safe. God protected the animals and kept is keeping his promise. And you can show them pictures of rainbows, because if you say rainbow... 
did not have any idea. My kid is three and finally understands what a rainbow is because he can see them now. And we've talked about them, right? So toddlers, you're not like, oh, they have to know what a rainbow is. They have to know what a promise is. They, Noah had a boat, had two animals on the boat, and God saved them, right? God keeps his promises. But you don't have to go in a lot of detail because they don't, they will not understand it because their brains are not developed enough to understand it. And that's okay, right? The point is, repetitive, telling the story, being repetitive, and teaching them over and over and over again. So when they are three, when they are four, when they are five, when they're 15, when they're 30, they know the story and can make the connection and then have the experiences in life and go, oh, I understand the story now. I understand that God keeps his promises. And because of that, I can share hope in Christ with others. Okay? Start young. You raise them into Titans. Doesn't happen when they're two. Right? So that's that story. Another option. This is great toddler, um, toddler or preschool. You can do connected to a story. How many of you have ever, ever done centers with, with kids? Where you have different activities going on? Okay? This one, great for toddlers or preschool. You can do it as a story or you can do it as an activity too. It's water, water table. Okay? Different toys. What do you think the first thing you need to do with before you let kids play with this is though? Tell them the rules because these are little squirty things and what do little, especially little boys like to do with little squirt, squirty things? Squirt. But do they squirt? Yes, little girls. They squirt. Yes, they like to squirt. So, hey, we're going to have this water table out and when I tell you you can come to this table, you can come to this table. Or if it's toddlers, you put them at the table and you let them play with it for a little bit and then you rotate them, okay? Toddlers, you have to be responsible for moving them around. So they can play with it. Oh, yeah. God told Noah to build a boat and they put animals on it. You can put animals on it. Let them play with it. And then it rains. These are great for making the rain, okay? Different activities like this where they can understand and see what rain is like. We are not going to let you play with this today. But if you want to play after the workshop, you can play with it. <laughs> okay? But as a prop or a story yeah, or we'll just to let them after you've talked about the story play with it and then just reiterate yeah away. you can use it for either yeah. so um, you can use it as a story and talk about Noah and the rain this is a great demonstration for rain um, and then afterwards say okay we're going to take turns and when I have you come over to the table you can practice and retell the story of Noah okay or if it's toddlers briefly share the story and just let them play with it um, as well. So any kids, any age, honestly, even elementary would love to play with this. Mm -hmm. It's just kids, it's water, right? Yes. So um, yeah, so that's that story. So now we're going to do another transition to a different story. Can anybody tell me that clock is wrong? 1038. 10 All right, we're doing good. So that's a great activity. Another one to go with this that I, I didn't bring because of the mess of it but is a great one to do is um, you get those, um, you have those like tin um, pans that you can buy at the grocery store that you can put food in and give to people, right? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The throwaway ones? Pans. Yes, thank you, aluminum pans. Um, you can buy those and you can have them set out in different areas and you put baking soda in them and then you get vinegar, distilled vinegar. Have any of you ever done this before? Okay, you get distilled vinegar and you put it in little cups and you can do for rainbow okay so this is a rainbow activity um, and you can do this I would say like no younger than two but two and up especially that three three to six would love this um, you get little containers and you put food color in with the vinegar so you can put the basic colors like red blue you know um, yellow what's the other primary color thank you no Red, blue, yellow, yeah, red, green. Yellow. Red, red, blue, yellow. We should know this, right? We are. S yes, thank you. <laughs> Don't do. Yeah, just do red, blue, and yellow because what happens is you put them in these little containers and then you get droppers, okay? And the kids squeeze the vinegar, the colored vinegar, out of the bowl and then they put it on the baking soda and it foams up and it makes this really cool thing. But then you can add the colors together, which will make the colors of the rainbow. 
Okay, so understanding the colors of the rainbow is a great activity, but again, probably three and up, some two-year-olds can do that, but three to six years old, that's a great activity that ties in the story and lets them see the colors of a rainbow. So, so we're gonna make another transition. So let's say this one is your three to five-year-old age, okay? So what I would do is say, okay, I'm gonna whisper, so go and put your bubbles in your mouth, listening ears, Okay, listening ears. And make sure when you see people doing it, oh, great job. Uh, how do you say your name? Emery. Emery, I didn't want to <laughs> watch that. <laughs> great job, Emery. Yeah, great job, Emery. I see that you're using your listening ears. When you reinforce positive behavior, it's going to cause children to continue to do it, right? Yeah. So put your listening ears on bubbles in. When I snap my fingers twice, I want you to stand up tiptoe, because by that age they know what tiptoe is, okay, tiptoe and over to the bird over there and take a seat, hands in your mouth, don't lose your bubbles, you ready, give me a thumbs up if you're ready, all right, have them stand up, and you kind of lead the way too, just tiptoe, 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 and you can say, uh, oh, keep bubbles in, tiptoe, 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 sorry, tiptoe, 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 come find a seat, if you guys have a church that is able to have rugs, those work great too. Grab your rug, find your seat. That keep, keeps kids in their own space. They have to stay on their rug. So they're not cheap, but if you're able to find them or have them, they're great to use. So go ahead and find a seat. I totally am not doing my PowerPoint, but that's okay. <laughs> so, um, this one we're going to do more of a story time. This is going to be more of your your um, fours, fives, sixes, the, early, the um, older age and that early childhood age. So this is where, again, remember they remember they're great with imaginate, imaginative, imaginative play. I'm having a hard time saying that, um, and like to be a part of the story. Okay, so this isn't something you would do in your toddler class because um, they would just. You'd be like, do this, and they'd be like, doo -doo -doo, and doing their own thing, right? One thing I forgot to have you do, I will bring them over to you so you don't have to get up, is um, grab an animal. Unless you want to come grab one real fast, and then I'll bring some to people that don't. But, sure. These stuffed animals are great for Noah's Ark story. Thank you, dear. <laughs> so what I should have said is walk over and grab a stuffed animal and come back to your seat. Now, kids are going to play with them, right? So what do you do when kids want to play with your animals? Let them play for a minute because then the curiosity goes away a little bit, right? Feel your animal, touch it, squeeze it. Oh, I love lions. It's so, so, I know, best thing about kid toys, right? So cute. Yep, let them play with it. Say, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, or I'm going to give you a minute to play with it. And then I'm going to start to count down to zero. And when I get to zero, I want you to put it on your lap and fold your hands. Okay, so go ahead and play. I'm not going to let you play with it for a minute, but <laughs> we'll pretend. Right? They're playing with it, they're feeling it. Okay, 10, 9, 8, put it in your laps, hands folded, 7, 6, they will, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, so um, when, you do, when you do give the instructions for the transition and say, get your animals, one thing you would want to make sure and say is these are not for throwing, you have to hold on to them, and don't hit people with them, right? Making sure you're communicating that, because how many of you know boys are going to be like, whack? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I probably was one of those girls that was like, whack, right? <laughs> it's not just a boy thing, but typically boys tend to be a little more that way. Okay, so make sure you give that instruction. And then, again, oh, and a song that's great. I spy with my little eye, oh, I spy with my little eye. And then you point, I can't see any of your names, I'm sorry. You, I met you last night, but it was... Jada. Jada. Jada, okay? And you would point it out. Jada, 
Oh, thank you for sitting. I spy. And you can do that song on. And then you can, oh, the first row is sitting so quietly with their animals. The second row is sitting so quietly with their animals. Okay? So, again, it's that, that's the classroom management that will help you keep it contained. Um, but will um, also make the kids be like, oh, proud. I'm proud of. And when you get the whole class, oh, give yourself a pound back. Good job, class. Okay? Early childhood eats that up. They eat it up. Okay? So you have your animals. Some kids are still going to play with it. As long as they're not, like, distracting kids, it's fine. Let them touch. Especially your kinesthetic like, fillers are going to be, like, just touching it. But again, if they're moving, they're learning. They're learning, right? So we all have our animals, okay? So then, how many can tell me, by raising your hand, what is this? What, is, what do you think this is? Triangle house. <laughs> Triangle house. Cardboard. Yep. Oh, 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 bubbles in, bubbles in. Raise your hand. What is what? What do you see here? Mountains. They're mountains. They're mountains. Now, how many of you have been to a mountain? Can you use your hand if you've been to a mountain. How many of you have seen a mountain? What's usually on the top of a mountain? Snow. Snow. You're helping them connect to what it is, right? Okay. I need someone to come and put some snow on our mountain. Who'd like to put snow on our mountain? <gasps> Great hand. I love your hand. Can you please quietly come up and put snow on a mountain? <gasps> I have another piece of snow. Would someone else like to put snow on a mountain? Great hand. Come on up. I don't remember which ones they go to, but you can just put it on the top of one. <laughs> okay. What am I doing here? Involving them. Visualizing it. <gasps> Do you know what else are often on mountains? Tall trees. Tall trees. Would anybody like to put a tall tree on our mountain? Anybody? <gasps> okay, come put a tall tree on the mountain. Okay. These are things that in that three to six years, they understand, they know, they've seen, right? If it's a toddler, you'd have to point out, this is a tree, this is a mountain, right? Letting Someone else wanted to put it. There you go. <laughs> Letting people put I'm like, I knew someone wanted to. Letting them put it on so they're connecting to it. They're able to connect um, to what you're doing. Okay? All right. Well, we're going to talk about a story. It somewhat has a mountain to do with it, but it also has a boat. Does anybody know what story this might be? What story involves a boat? Noah. Noah. Again, if they've been taught from toddler... They will know. Boat means Noah, right? <laughs> Not all the time. You don't want to make that assumption. Because obviously there are kids in there that they don't have family at home teaching them these things, or they're new. So never make the assumption. But you can ask, does anybody know? This is the story of Noah, right? This is the story of Noah. Now Noah was an old man, and God told Noah to build an ark, or a boat, whatever you want to call it. Can, yep, again, you're doing the hammering. Can you pretend to build a boat with me? Oh, I keep working so hard. Oh, there's our boat. Noah built a boat. Okay. Does anybody know what Noah put on the boat? Animals. Animals, right? Again, they know the story. You're having them tell you the story when they're in that older age. Okay. But reconnecting. God told Noah to put animals on the boat and Noah's family. And they got all on the boat. Do you know why they would have to get on a boat? Again, you're asking questions. God's going to send a flood. Okay? God is going to send a flood. I hope some of you like to get wet, because you're going to get wet today. Can someone tell me the time real fast again? Sorry. Oh, gosh. Okay, we'll go back. All right. God's going to send rain. So use, use the spray bottle if it wants to work for me. Come on. I just refilled it, so it's like... Okay, it rained and rained for 40 days and 40 nights. That's a long time. Yeah. And you can have, what you would want to do is you can have kids with, this is just a blue tablecloth. It rained and rained and it covered the tall trees. So understanding how high the water went, right? And then it covered the tall mountains. And, the, and you could have someone be the boat in the back on top of it, right? 
you're involving them and you're having kids move the water up so that all they see is water. Because again, they've never seen a flood. They don't know what that looks like. <laughs> it did capsize, right? Okay. So, again, you're involving them in the story and helping them picture and imagine it in their heads. Okay. All right. We're going to look up here real fast and I'm going to let you guys go because um, it's time. But I will be here for questions too. So, um, how does it apply? And these techniques help raise toddlers to titans. Okay. What it does is it creates a fun and safe environment for them to learn, okay? And when their brain is engaged, they learn. And they learn what it means to serve. They learn what it means to be Christ-like. And because of that, they can become titans later on because they know God's truth. They know that God loves them. They know that God keeps his promises. They know that God provides. See, they, through their whole life, you're, you get to start with them at a young age and start to build that foundation as much as we can because honestly we only get them for what? An hour, right? But investing and instilling that, those truths into them will create them to be titans in the future that will make an impact for Christ. Okay? So this is my information and I will be around if you have questions and maybe at the table but feel free to come and ask questions. I hope you guys had fun. Um, just please make sure you give me back the stuffed animals because my children will cry if I don't bring them home. So, um, but I'll be here for questions, and I believe the next session starts at 11.